Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about knowledge. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you, what, what do really good programmers know that bad ones or mid-level or average uh, programmers don't? So the short answer is that great programmers know how to solve, a pro how, how to solve the correct problem. And that is something that the average programmers will never understand. Or rather, they, they, they never, never, never understand that. So what I mean by solving the right problem is that when you are a programmer, what you're in essence doing is that you are, conv you are taking some type of human problem that we have in this world and you're trying to figure out how you can make this problem go away. That's the basics. You're using code to do this because the problem is most efficiently, or you believe at least, your suspicion is that the problem can most efficiently be solved through a computer, with or rather with a computer. If you can solve it in some other fashion, if it can be uh, something else, then that's great. But for the sake of argument, we're gonna say that it's gonna go through a computer. Now, the next thing for you to really figure out is how to solve that problem in a fashion that is actually going to yield the greatest results. And this is actually a lot harder than you think because most of the time you see people who have, the, I see this happen all the time, especially when you have like hackathon ideas or you have these happy-go-lucky people who come up with one idea after the other to the same problem but and then they just blindly apply it without actually thinking it through or actually verifying that it's going to solve the underlying problem. It's pretty, I, the, I don't know if you've ever seen this but there's always someone in a company who starts up a new initiative and says hey you know we're gonna standardize this or we're gonna do this and we're gonna make this better and then they just take some days to put something half-assed together that sort of solves the problem and then it becomes what we call in the industry an orphan. Orphans. They're, an orphan is just a piece of code or a feature or something that was like a attempt or like a good, a clever idea from someone at the company to solve a given problem and then it turns out that nobody's using it or it doesn't really meet the, the expectations and then people just leave that code and it becomes legacy. Legacy that you, my friend, is going to have to maintain forever, forever, ever, because nobody wants to throw away code either, mostly, because throwing away code means either that you failed or that you're throwing away your money or mental money, when in reality all you're throwing out is pretty much uh, cow shit, because that's what it is. Software that isn't being used has no value. So this is the fundamental issue with a mid-level, like the average programmer, that they they don't actually try, think hard enough about how to solve the problem in such a fashion. Like solving the problem, guys, is just one part of it. It's not just about solving it. It's about solving it in the correct manner, so that the solution itself becomes valuable. An example would be, I mean, you can, if I tell you that I have, I have a splinter in my foot, then you can cut off my leg, but I'm not going to be very happy about it because it's not the right solution. If you, uh, an example of, um, another example of how, how to think about this is that if, uh, maybe this front end people can actually relate to the most of this. I don't know how many people I've met who have attempted to create a standard component library. And how many of you guys have figured out that after you created that standard component library, nobody uses those components? Because this is the problem that I'm stating. The problem, and I actually had this problem, at, I've had this problem in many, like in more than one company at this point, where I've try to explain to these to to the developers that the problem you have isn't that you can't create standard components the problem you have is that your designers will not 
allow you to standardize something because they're not working with standards. They just create whatever they want over and over and you have to comply or you have to push back and say that this is the standard component and then you have a fight or a discussion until you realize that, oh shit, I still have to fold. And the second thing that you have as an issue is that uh, most of the developers, like when you create a standard component, they may not feel that this fits their personal needs at that moment, which means that they're going to create a one-off solution or hack it to get hack your component together or create it from scratch. Because what you're you you haven't solved the real problem. The real problem isn't that you don't have standard components, if that makes sense. It's uh, it's similar to well you're, you, you, it's, a, it's such a hard thing to describe, I think, but it is, at es in essence, what's happening is that the mid-level programmers are just thinking up a solution that can be applied, but they don't actually think as much about the correct solution, because there are many ways to solve the same problem, and that is what the really, truly great super programmers, the people that I personally look up to, really get right. They really know, like they, they get an idea, they create an idea that is, that, that is adoptable, that gets adopted because that's the, that's, the, that's the big difference. Just writing code over and over and over and solving a problem in a way that seems easy or like that seems simple is not the way to go. It's not about just solving the problem, it is about solving the problem in the correct fashion. A, an, another example is when you have to deal with really, really clever programmer who create really, really generic code and reusable functions and things of this nature. You find them very often in the functional uh, branch of programming and they, they are absolutely genius. They're, they're, that's not in discussion here, but what they do is that they think that they, they fall victim to the curse of knowledge. They believe that just because they understand how lambda calculus and algebraic types all fit together in a perfect harmony of mathematical perfection that every single other programmer knows that as well. And so they create all of these levels and layers of abstractions for different functionalities within the code. And then they are the only person who uses that. So you have one fork in the code where everybody's doing one thing and then they have their own code that where they are using everybody, everything pretty much, or using their own stuff pretty much. And nobody knows how it works, and nobody in, isn't interested in how it works because nobody went, uh, nobody has invested the sort of time and energy that they have in order to create to to learn how to all how all this works. So their solution is actually, although genius, actually not worth anything because nobody's going to use it. It's the same thing in. Uh, in open source, you have these gurus in different languages who create amazing solutions, but this this does not matter because it doesn't matter if the, a, a solution to a problem that only one person or two people can apply is not really worth all that much to the vast majority of people. The true curse, like the true challenge of a true master programmer or a guru, is to find a problem, a pain point for people, and solve it in a digestible, easy to approach, simple, call it whatever you want, to, to get the solution so well structured and so simple that m people who are less skilled or less informed or so forth can simply adopt it and make that a very pleasant and easy thing to do. So what I want you to take away from this is that the biggest difference between the truly great programmers and the normal average ones is that the normal average ones are more focused on just solving the problem in some in some fashion, while the truly great programmers are the sort of people who identify the correct way of solving a problem. And the correct way is to solve it in such a fashion that it stays sustainable, it's simply to it's simple to adopt, and people with less skill can understand what's going on. That is the, tr the real challenge when you're solving a problem. At least if you ask me, have a great day.